Alright, Happy New Year from the John Roberts Gaming Channel. And you are watching the second part of my match with Community Manager Julius. I hope everyone is having a healthy, safe, and happy New Year. And I would like to thank each and every one of our subscribers. We have reached a small milestone of 100 subscribers. Let's keep it going. Like, share, subscribe, and do all those wonderful things. So, Julius vs. John Roberts. Thank you for watching, and I hope you enjoy. Soviet Union, round five. We am going to attempt to get rid of this uh, artillery. May the dice gods be with us. Success, success. Yeah, let's put the sub in the Mediterranean for now. These are all my units. They're not going anywhere. Let's move on. Five infantry. Let's see what Germany's got in store for us. So at the end of round four, and after Soviet Union, Let's turn on round five. Uh, the allies have a bit of a lead, which means that they probably didn't have much of a lead. If we had checked this at the end of a uh, United States round, we, I think he's going to gain momentum here, though. And I cannot outproduce Japan. I do not have a power that can single handedly take on one of his powers. Obviously, I do have more attack power than him. You can see that right here, but it's not much and it's very spread out. So I think Julius definitely has the advantage here, but uh, UK round five. What do you say, Germany? What do you say? 12 infantry, repaired two points of damage. Okay. Free land, an archangel. Took Southern Europe, uh, lost an infantry there. Northwest Europe, I lost one infantry, he lost two infantry. I like that, and I hold the territory. That's always very nice. Took Italy, lost one infantry, taking out three of my units. That's all right, and France. Lost four infantry, destroying three of my infantry. So a pretty lucky uh, trading there for me. So he moved two aircraft, any aircraft artilleries into France. So he only needs one more victory city. All right, move that into Germany. Two infantry to Belarus, four infantry to West Russia for mobilization. Two infantry in Karelia and ten infantry in Germany. As for the United Kingdom, let's get eight units. See what that looks like. We'll do that. And we'll save eight. It's quite a bit, but what else am I going to do with it? I don't have the capacity. So now let's go for it. Let's go for Karelia. If the British don't get it, the United States can get it. Because they have a couple of units that could reach too. If he really wanted to, he could one-two punch me with his, uh, with his aircraft here in Season 5. Let's go for France. It's favorable. So, may the dice gods be with us. It is favorable. So it was three infantry, three artillery, one tank, and one fighter, versus ten infantry and two anti-aircraft. For him to only lose one stinking unit. Yes, this is what happens when I take a calculated risk. Just saying. Units back into United Kingdom. Land this fighter. Alright. There's nothing else we could do. I don't want to complain, but, you know, this was kind of... You know, when you're playing somebody who's a top 10, you don't want to see them just 
mop the floor with you because of dice. That let me know what you guys think down in the comments. Because this USA round five. Let's take a look at uh, Japan round five. Two transports, six infantry, two bombers. Successful bombing raid again. Took Madagascar. Took Rhodesia. Took Belgian Congo. French Equatorial Africa. Got a submarine. He also lost the submarine and an aircraft carrier. That was a uh, lucky for me. Destroyed one infantry in Caucasus and took that. One fighter to 57. Couple of units to 51. Couple of units to 33. One infantry to Kazak. Couple of units to Szechuan. An artillery to Ivenki. Three infantry to Anwe. Some aircraft to West Russia. Three infantry to Persia. Some units to Okinawa. Two infantry to Bariatia. And two infantry to Yunnan. Mobilized two transports to 60. Three infantry to India, one infantry, two bombers to Manchuria. That's interesting you put the bombers to Manchuria. I guess so that they have range to uh, Moscow, but I really don't think he can take Moscow just yet. So he's going to try to snipe this. But losing this last round, or not even being able to take anything out here, really, really, really hurt us now because of that. Um, I was talking to Julius about this, and he said, well, his theory was that it evened out here in 57, and I said to him, this is a much bigger deal. I don't care too much about this. I know you're going to get to Honolulu, but... So I don't see this as evening out for this. Where you lost one unit and I lost six. And here, you lost two units and I lost one. That just does not even out. And so what if we do get a sub and a destroyer? And a couple of fighters. What do we got coming back? We got one transport coming back. If we get two fighters, and then we could even get another transport. And two units for that transport. No, we already have enough for the the transport. So let's get another destroyer. Let's do that. Two subs and two destroyers with one destroyer, and I most definitely should have enough to uh, take care of anything he puts here. What if we only get one destroyer and a couple more units? All right, I like that. I think it's the best I could do right now. Load him up, load him up, load him up. One in Italy, one in Southern Europe. We'll give you the cruiser bombardment. Battleship bombardment. All right, we got two fighters that can go for... Let's at least go on a bombing run. May the dice gods be with us. So for non-combat, like I said, let's put you here, these three, three transports, th these infantry to Morocco, this one infantry goes back, sorry, this one transport goes back. So in the double and triple check, it looks like everything is all good. Do I think I want to take this fighter and put you in Moscow, and we will mobilize our units. So we're going to put two fighters in Western, we're going to put a destroyer out of San Francisco, Transport out of San Francisco, a submarine out of San Francisco. So let's get over to the Soviet Union. Soviet Union, we could have the capacity to build one. So now if I do this, should I just get two tanks? It's better to just get two tanks. Infantry, I guess three infantry is better than two tanks. Three infantry is the same uh, amount of firepower in defense as the tanks, and it is one extra uh, hit point, so that is a better buy. Should I repair? Let's hold on to the IPCs. It gives me more flexibility. My logic is, if he takes the territory, he'll either get the two IPCs, or he'll get the repaired 
complex. Either way, it's worth two IPCs to him. To me, holding the two IPCs just kind of gives me a little more flexibility for next round to decide what I want to do with my IPCs. I think we can take two infantry and see if we can get ourselves caucuses. And that will be our only Soviet attack. All right, may the dice gods be with us. what Germany's response to all this is going to be. What do they have in store for us? United Kingdom, round six, let's review. 12 infantry, he's just been buying straight infantry. All right, Northwest Europe was left open, he took it. And he has stacked Italy. Took back Southern Europe, took Finland. So more units to West Russia. Two fighters to Germany, anti-aircraft to Italy, anti-aircraft artillery to Karelia, three infantry to Baltic states, and mobilized his infantry. So the United Kingdom has four transports. So that looks good. Five infantry, two artillery, and one fighter. We're going to take one infantry. Northwest Europe, leaving six for France. Tank Blitz here. I think that's really all we got for the United Kingdom. A couple of soft captures. The good thing about soft captures is I don't risk losing any of my units. And if he wants to attack, now my infantry defend at two rather than attacking at one. It's something to think about when trading. Um, France, I'm doing a soft capture, but I'm not exactly doing it lightly. I'm leaving a medium stack here and I'm going to put another medium stack so as for non-combats, I really don't think there are any. Well, let's end combat phase first. <laughs> We're ferrying these over to Moscow. We don't really need more to hold Moscow at this point. Quite a standoff we got here. Everything goes in UK. This is our only industrial complex. We max it out, and we send it over to Japan. All right, USA round six, Let's take a look around, take a look around. One aircraft carrier, 10 infantry, two tanks, one artillery. I think it's inf interesting he bought an aircraft carrier. West Africa, destroyed 10 IPCs. I did destroy one bomber, so he actually didn't profit off of that, but 10 IPCs. South Africa, so his conquest of Africa is pretty much complete. That is not good. Caucuses, lost in infantry. All right, one infantry to Archangel, the aircraft to West Russia, one infantry to Transjordan, three infantry to Persia, one infantry to Caucasus, one infantry to Kazakh, two infantry to Yakut, move some units to Xinjiang, one to Bariatia, move this fleet down to 31. What does it got on it? One infantry, one artillery. Okay, C zone 60 and the uh, Japanese shuck to Yunnan. Mobilized an aircraft carrier in 60. Two tanks and an infantry in Manchuria, three infantry in India, one artillery and six infantry in Japan. The United States, I think that's good for now. Just a simple one-on-one. -on -one. We'll go on a bombing run here. So let's take one transport, we'll pick up one artillery, and one infantry, and we will attack Southern Europe, thusly. Two fighters, may the dice gods be with us.
All right, I'm happy with those outcomes. I'm gonna put this fighter back in Norway as well. You go to Moscow, one of you go to 15. Let's move these two fighters up to Western Canada. We can take two infantry from here into Morocco. Take the four units from Morocco, put them in Algeria. Let's mobilize our units. Another submarine in 56. Two tanks up in Norway. And another transport in C Zone 11. And we will send it over to Soviet Union. Soviet Union! He really uh, bombed the heck out of us. So we would have to spend. Well, obviously, we are going to produce one tank. 34 that he can hit with uh, Moscow with, with the Germans. 33 just in infantry. One artillery. Don't. So it's a four on two. Hopefully, we get that. May the dice gods be with us. Let's get this submarine. We'll put it in 15. It'll help defend, I think. If we set it like that, so we'll mobilize our tank, and we will send it over to Germany. Let's see what you got in store for us. UK, around seven. So Germany, around seven, 12 infantry. So he got Finland, and he got Southern Europe, stacked up France, failed in Northwest Europe. So for com non-combat moves, uh, two infantry to West Russia, three infantry to Karelia, five fighters to Germany, and one anti-aircraft artillery to France. And mobilize two infantry into Karelia and ten infantry in Germany. So we've built seven infantry. Maybe we should get another carrier. Maybe I should do that. Maybe we get another carrier. Because I have the fighters for it. And then we could probably defend C-Zone 5. Let's do that. I, or I was thinking I could hit West Russia with my British aircraft and then hit West Russia with my US aircraft and then hit West Russia with all of my Russians. But I don't think I'm going to do that. I, I, I don't think that's as good of an idea as it seems on paper. Uh, let me know. Let me know if you think I'm making a mistake. If you think I have an opportunity here to try and take out West Russia and I'm passing up on it out of fear of it going badly or it being a mistake or just losing too much of my aircraft. Let me know. But I'm going to continue with no combat. So for non-combat, I think we just put all seven right here in Northwest Europe. And we have two more fighters to put into Moscow. Let's make sure we put these two fighters in Season 6, as well as these two fighters, as well as this cruiser, this aircraft carrier, these two destroyers. That is a definite sign that uh, we are in a, a little bit of trouble here in this game. So let's see what we could do to pull ourselves out of that trouble. Aircraft carrier, five infantry. And let's see what Japan's got in store for us. USA, round seven. Let's take a look at Japan, round seven. Took Egypt, Western Australia. Took Caucasus, lost an infantry there. And he lost the bomber, taking the four transports. I guess that's the best I could have hoped for there. Still unfortunate that the uh, the interface kind of... Uh, I don't know. I don't know what else to say about it. Okay, landed a bomber in France. Put some units in West Russia. One infantry to Archangel. One infantry to Vologda. One infantry to Novosibirsk. One infantry to Caucasus. A couple of units to Transjordan. Three infantry to Persia. One to Kazakh. Some units to Xinjiang. Two infantry to Evenki. One infantry to Yakut. One infantry to Bariatia, eight infantry to Sheshwan, one infantry to Rhodesia, some units down to C-Zone 46, move this fleet to 52, two infantry to Wake Island, eight infantry to, to uh, Yunnan, okay, mobilize these units in Japan, Manchuria, and India. I like the looks of that. So two transports to Southern Europe and one to Italy. Bombardment. Let's make sure we get Finland. Let's make sure I'm not missing anything. 
Okay, may the dice gods be with us. Land these three fighters back in 15. This bomber, Western US. Let's put these fighters back in Eastern US. That's right, we bought an aircraft carrier. So don't be silly. Bring the transport back to 11. The transports from 11 will bring more units to Morocco. There's an issue of this Japanese bomber here. Hmm. That should take care of it. Okay, aircraft carrier in 56, another transport in 11, one submarine in 56. Okay, let's send it over to the Soviet Union. Three infantry, caucuses again, may the dice gods be with us. Okay, so caucuses worked out. No non-combat moves. Three infantry. All right. Let's see it, Germany. Okay, this is UK round eight. So considering by leaving the transports in season eight, I don't really know if I'm gonna continue. I'll probably finish this round and we'll see how it goes. For Germany round eight, 12 infantry. Took Finland, no units lost. Destroyed three tanks, no units lost. So that's nice. No, oh, we held on to Italy. And he lost four infantry, uh, taking back southern Europe. So those aren't bad outcomes. Moved some units back to France and back to Germany. Mobilized all his infantry. So is it possible to get back in this? Obviously we need a transport. And let's go for a bomber. Okay, I'm gonna make an, a desperate assault on Western Russia. The hope is that I take this with the Soviets. I believe that's my only assault. I see nothing else. May the dice gods be with us. Okay, I took out six of his infantry. Let's see if that's enough. I'm gonna pull this fleet back to sea zone seven. Let's see what happens. All right, USA round eight. And now these kind of things here, like destroyed one destroyer, three submarines, two fighters, one aircraft carrier, and lost one cruiser. There is no doubt about it. There is nothing else to be said about it. That means he attacked me. I had one destroyer, three subs, two fighters, and an aircraft carrier, and I hit him twice. Meanwhile, he hit me one, two, three, four, five, six, seven times. No, there's no beating dice like that. So I am sorry folks, I just didn't see the point in continuing that game. Uh, the outcomes were just way too lopsided for my liking and it got to a point where it just didn't make sense to continue um it made it difficult to learn much from this game aside from getting good dice or getting bad dice if i did take one thing away from this game it's that perhaps there are times that we should take more risks than we'd like to I know it's very difficult, it oftentimes does not work out in my favor. I don't know how your individual experience is, but for me, risk doesn't work out all that often in this game. 
but seeing a top player take some risky moves in this game does make you think about how often you take risks but it also serves the question of how subjective is everybody's experience with dice my experience with dice since this game has come out has been on the poor side so let me know what your opinion of that is and what your experience with the dice is and let me know what you thought about this game what are your thoughts about the outcomes of this game did you enjoy this game if you did enjoy this game then I would urge you to like share subscribe and do all those wonderful things that you do and I would like to wish everybody a happy safe and healthy new year happy gaming and as always Thank you for watching.